this is an extremely challenging operation in which you've got international experts also roped in right now. Let's run you through what's hampering the rescue efforts. Why is it taking so long? Five days on, the operations continue. The debris is still around five, 50 meters ahead of the laborers. And to get through that is a serious challenge for which equipment is not available in Uttarkashi. So it's being brought in from different parts of the country. Area leading up to the laborers is also extremely weak. There's a possibility of it coming crumbling down, which is something we simply cannot afford. Now, uh, earth movers, power generators, small machines are also inside the tunnel. Some, in some cases with the workers, sometimes in between the debris. So that's something that they're also having to navigate around. It's difficult right now to reach the trapped laborers directly. It's not as simple as really clearing the debris through. They have to ensure that they do it sensitively as well because these workers are trapped essentially in a pocket and they don't want any threat to their lives right now. So that's what makes this extremely sensitive as well. Let me take this back across to Ashutosh Mishra for more. Uh, Ashutosh, extremely challenging operation. You know, we've seen these kind of operations being conducted abroad as well, in which case as well it's taken at least a week for the workers, for anyone who's been stranded to be pulled out, which is the circumstance of the case here as well. You know, uh, there are some respite in terms of there is no uh, claustrophobic kind of situation because uh, even behind those debris wall, those workers have at least a passage of one and a half kilometers. So they can at least move freely around. However, the temperature that remains issue inside the tunnel, it is really very warm. So clearly the communication is to establish, has been established just to keep them, you know, psychologically motivated and encouraged that look, we all efforts are being done. The food essentially is the protein supplement that would be required for the survival. Of course, it is not a regular diet because you have a very narrow passage to supply the uh, food with the press, uh, you know, compressor and also the water. But what is more challenging is that if there is sickness, what kind of medicines required because essentially the communication is, the range is 50 to 60 meter using a pipe. So one may not be able to express what kind of treatment that one requires. So essentially only the basic medicines. Now moreover, the challenges that remain topographically as well because this is being one of the most fragile mountains the scale and the vibration they can uh, you know soak the observation at only some magnitude because if there are massive uh, you know vibration then eventually it will lead to more and more falling of the debris and that will again hamper the operation and the obstacles coming on the way through the beaming and this uh, uh, you know the uh, tunneling in the small scape tunnel again that will create more and more obstruction and as we know this is the race against time this is indeed one of the most critical risky operation okay. in the mountains in the Himalayas, Akshita. So extremely risky, but we're all, of course, praying for the safety of those workers. Ashutosh explaining to you what are the challenges right now, what are the conditions in which those trapped workers continue to live and hope, of course, that they will see daylight in the next 24 hours. As part of the efforts to pull them out, we've seen sophisticated equipment being brought down to Uttarkashi as well, including auger machines. You've seen this term being thrown around a lot uh, with regards to this particular rescue operation. Let's tell you about this high-grade drilling machine. It's been brought down from the national capital and essentially it has a rotating shaft. It's a mammoth machine. But to just explain to you how it works, it's got a rotating shaft that essentially cuts through some of uh, uh, the debris. And it does it in a very scientific way to ensure that there's no problem of the debris falling further. It's got, in fact, a 900 mm wide uh, mild steel. This is an entire, in fact, steel machine that has been brought down to Uttarkashi. It's got a replacement pipe. It's got a cutting head uh, with a helical screw blade. And it's the screw blade that's being deployed now, being used to ensure that it can drill through, create a hole for a pipe to be put in place as well. This machine is already in works right now, is already being used. It was flown down by the IAF and hopefully will ensure that the 40 workers who are trapped inside are pulled out safely. That at least is the hope right now.